research study that there was a correlation of positive 1.0, you know that everybody in that study, when one when when caffeine went up or when uh, what did we say here when SAT went up, GPA went up. Everybody in the study, perfect 1.0. Make sense? But look at this. You have numbers between 0 and 1.0. What's a number between, what's halfway between 0 and 1.0? 0. 0. 0. 0.50, right? Here we have 0. 0.50. Now that's a positive 0. 0.50. And down here we have a halfway point between 0 and negative 1. What is that? Negative 0. 0.50. You got it. Negative 0. 0.50, right here. So let me show you what these graphs look like. This is, if this is negative, point, or negative 1.0, negative 5.0 is still going to go, what? In this direction. It's still going to go down. That's the quality of it. The negative means it's going on a downward slant. As one goes up, the other goes down. But what changes is the spread. You see, it's going to look more like this. See how people, it's not so tight? You see the difference between this and this? This isn't so tight. This would be a negative 5.0. This would be a positive 5.0. Same direction. It's just more of a spread. Things aren't, it's a little more ambiguous. See? Still going up in that direction. You still have it in that direction, but it's more spread out. And this is what we call the power. How strong the correlation is. So before I take your question, hold on one second. Answer this. What is stronger? A positive 1.0 correlation or a positive 0. 0.50 correlation? Positive 0.50. Okay, listen to the question again very carefully. Which is stronger, positive 0.50 or positive 1.0? Positive 1.0. Positive 1.0. Which is stronger, positive 5.0? I forget. Positive 0. 0.50 or negative 1.0? Got it. You see this? The strength is the number. When you're asked what's the strength of correlation, you choose the bigger number. When you're asking for the quality of it, that's whether one goes up and the other goes down. So people, I know students oftentimes think positive is always stronger. That's not the case. You have to think of it as a number line. Cool? Okay. I'm just going to ask you cool. If you ask you cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Any other questions about correlation? Let me throw a few out at you. Which is stronger, negative 0.25 or negative 0.20? Negative 0.25. Which is stronger, negative 0.25 or positive 0.50? Positive. Which is stronger, negative 0.50 or positive 0.50? Neither. Neither. They're equal. Equally yeah. stronger. Think, think about this again. Which is stronger, negative 0.50 or positive 0.50? Neither. Positive. Positive. Negative. They're the same because... I may say they're the same. They're the same. You look at the number. Positive isn't stronger than negative. Positive means as one goes up, the other goes up. It's confusing. You know why it's confusing? It's not. It's because that's the way we're, we're taught to think. We're programmed, that. To, think we're programmed to think that positive means stronger and negative means weaker. And you got to like suspend that when you're thinking this way. So those of you who are confused about this, you have to let go of something you learned. Because <laughs> you're, you're thinking logically and intelligently, but it's based on different rules than how we got to follow here, you know? That's cool. Uh, is that a good? Correlation is exhausted here. You're happy with it. Can I show you a couple of very interesting correlations? See, these are all linear correlations. Linear means it's a straight line, right? This is a straight line. Here's another straight line. And you guys know I like to talk about my funny nonlinear correlations. Ready? Don't ask me how they do this in numbers, I forget. <laughs> so don't ask me how the coefficients look on this. There's more than one co coefficient when you do this. But check these out. There's a study in social psychology that we're going to look at in here that actually is evidence against a linear idea that as income increases, contentedness in life increases. 
So we're oftentimes in capitalism we're taught that it's a perfect positive correlation. The more money I have, the happier I am, right? That's the concept, the myth, the ideology. Science shows us something a little different. When you uh, do surveys of individuals and you ask them what's your income, uh, based on zero to two hundred thousand dollars a year, and what's your contentedness, what you find is between content and happy, what you find is something that's nonlinear. You don't get a straight line. You get something that looks like this. Actually, this would be income down here, sorry, and contentedness up here. Now this will make sense. This is a nonlinear correlation. It's nonlinear. It's not a line. It's, a U, it's, an, it's called an inverted U curve. And what they find is contentedness re reaches its peak right about here, and that is around, uh, you've heard this before, I think I told you before, right? It's around $60,000 a year. At around $60,000 a year, of course, this depends on where you're living, et cetera, et cetera, you know. might not be $60,000 a year in a place like Manhattan. Then it might be $75,000 a year. But for most communities, when someone's making around $60,000 a year, they claim that this is just enough to feel that there's a little there to work with in case of emergency, enough to take the little trip with the kids, Enough to enjoy life and feel a little safe, but not enough to start getting bored with having excess. You know, the stuff that happens when we have excess. And this is really contrary to what we're often taught, that the more we have, the more we'll be happy. I actually find that when people start to make more and have more, they have more to worry about, okay. more to protect. You know, as people get wealthier, it's like drinking salt water. The more you drink, the thirstier you get. And power and wealth is much the same. That's a nonlinear. Is that sixty thousand for an individual or a family? That's a good question. <coughs> That's a good question. That I can't remember. I think if my memory serves me correctly, it's per individual. I was, <coughs> but yeah, obviously other variables are going to come into play there. You, you touched on it because uh, I, I I remember a time when I worked at Merrill Lynch. Mm-hmm. Ah. And the the people that had money, it was like every half hour or every 20 minutes, they were calling their stockbroker and they were worried whether or not they lost money or they made money. Yeah. I mean, it was like, don't you have something else to do other than keep calling me about? Yeah, well, I think that the good analogy, Eric Fong is the one that we're going to stay later at often said, as I said before, money and power is like drinking salt water. The more you drink, the thirstier you get. You know, there's something very strange about that. Okay, here's another nonlinear correlation that I like to talk about. I think it's funny, and that is contentedness in marriage. Contentedness with your marriage partner in years married. You might think that as you go on, contentedness goes down or contentedness goes up. It's not linear. But it turns out to be as this. You're very happy. You're very sad. Whoops. I'm even happy when I'm sad. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> and here we have 50 years of marriage. And right around here we have 25 years. What they find is that it starts off people are in bliss. And then something happens and it goes down. And then right around here it starts to go back up. But it's a U-curve. Non-linear. U-curve correlation. You ready for this? What happens right here? about 20 years into the marriage. What typically happens? Children leaving the house. <laughs> They're happy, uh-oh. <laughs> expense, 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 child-rearing misery. <laughs> and then, uh-oh, happiness again. Can I tell you guys something?